Welcome to the session on effective communication. The session is comprises of three videos. First one is effective communication, second one is listening and third is notes taking. All three videos and all three topics are equally important for the communication within the classroom between students and teachers. In the first video, we are going to discuss a cognitive scheme or a typology or we can call it taxonomy which can be used to design a effective communication process between learners and teachers in the classroom. Even if we are teachers, we have been students at some point of time. As a teachers, we are also interacting with the students. Some of these questions are perennial questions or common questions across the students across the different generations. For example, students ask why I am not able to gain from my instructor who I know is very knowledgeable. Students also ask why things go above my head at times. As a student, we are also keep wondering how to distinguish books which are better than some others. Why some instructors ask more questions than the answers they give in a class? Why some classes are more interesting than others? even when instructors of the classes are equally accomplished researchers and academics. There are certain questions from the instructor's perspective also about communication process in the classroom between learner and teacher. Two perennial concerns of the instructors across the generations are how to keep students engaged in the learning process and second how to better prepare our students for the profession. Our students might be joining a corporate world, some other workforce as an employee or might be starting their own venture. In all these situations, we want our students to be better prepared for that profession of their choice. These are the questions about learning and teaching and answers to these questions can be found in some extent by designing a learning process and the communication process in the classroom in a more effective manner. Answer of these questions lies in the fact that learning and teaching are not straight and simple activities of giving and receiving instructions. Giving and receiving instruction happens at different levels of thinking. So, if we understand this complexity, we can create the kind of learning and teaching experience we want. For that purpose, there is a taxonomy called Bloom's taxonomy. This taxonomy deals with levels of cognitive learning. Bloom's taxonomy is used to identify the cognitive objective of the classroom. It was developed in 1950s by a large group of instructors led by Benjamin Bloom. This taxonomy is a means of expressing qualitatively different kind of thinking. This can be adapted for classroom use as a planning tool and surprisingly it is it continues to be one of the most universally applied model in the classroom instructions or giving and receiving instructions. Bloom's taxonomy provides a way to organize thinking skills into six levels from the most basic to higher order level of thinking. In 90s, Lauren Anderson, a former student of Bloom revised the taxonomy as a result number of changes were made. Revised taxonomy looks like this creating, evaluating and analysis are called as higher order thinking or higher order learning. Applying, understanding and remembering are normal levels of thinking and learning. We need to understand this taxonomy before we use it for our classroom instructions. Any concept can be learned at the cognitive level on these six levels. First level is remembering. This is the level when we are able to recall, recognize, describe or name 
certain concepts. For example, we all remember most of us for that matter remember the value of a small g which is 9.8 meters per second square. Next to the remembering level is understanding. This is about ability to interpret an idea, paraphrase that idea in our own word or if required to be able to classify or explain the phenomena or this level of cognitive learning requires little deeper psychological effort. This can be instigated by asking questions, by giving problems or solving problems and systematically looking at the deeper aspects of a concept. Third level is application level, when a concept is not only remembered and understood, but also is applied. At this level, participants are provoked to implement certain things based on a concept or to carry out an experiment by using that concept or executing a plan by using the concept in the question. Next to the application level is analysis, when we are not only focused on the application of that concept, but we want to provoke students to look at the application of the concept from the different perspectives, looking at the different aspect of the same phenomena. If we continue to use our example of a small g, then remembering would be just knowing the role of a small g, just knowing the value of a small g. Understanding will be ability to derive the use of the small g and explain where and what situation a small g is applicable. For example, if a thing is dropped from Qutub Minar, how fast it will reach to on the surface of earth and how the speed will change. All these explanation will be based on understanding level of learning of the small g. Application is going little more further, when we might ask students what would be the value of a small g for example, on the moon. Next to that application level is analysis and on the analysis level we might ask students to compare the moment of uh, stone falling from certain height on the moon and it, the comparison of its moment of being fallen from the same height on the earth and describe the whole difference between falling of an object and how a small g can be used as an explain this and in, interrogate this whole phenomena. Now, coming to the next level which is evaluation, checking, hypothesizing, critiquing, experimenting or judging. At this level, we can give a practical problem to the students, where some concept is applied or supposed to be applied. We can also tell students, this is the concept to be applied at this level and ask students to identify the most or more elegant solution. Any problem can have various solutions. By using same concepts, we can reach to a large number of solutions. Picking up the most appropriate solution based on many other things is provoked at the evaluation level. Next to evaluation level is creation, which is also related to designing, constructing, producing or inventing. Generally, we want our PhD students to work at the creation level. For any concept, how it can be extended further, how a new instrument can be designed based on the existing concepts, how the new solutions can be found using existing concepts for the different problems are provoked in this level of thinking. This scheme can be consciously used in the classroom. For that, we need to identify at which level of thinking we want to address or we want to touch upon in the classroom about certain concept. Once we decide that on x concept, 
we want to touch upon either of these six levels. Once that decision is made, we can create the whole learning plan looking at the different concepts to be taught in the classroom and we can arrange those concepts according to the different levels of thinking we want to attain in the classroom. Once we decide which concept has to be addressed at what level of thinking, we can identify an appropriate learning method. For example, for the remembering level methods will be focused on making students to memorize that concept, finding out acronyms, deriving some parallels, making some rhymes etcetera are the methods for students to remember certain thing. If we want to touch upon the understanding level, then we have to identify some appropriate problems which require students to understand that in a deeper manner. When we decide to touch upon the application level or applying level of cognitive learning in the classroom, then we have to design some experiment or design some assignment where students will be able to apply that concept. When we want students to analyze certain problem, then we need to give them more complex problems or case studies or case problems wherein students have to examine a phenomena from different angles. If we want our students to evaluate or reach at the evaluation level of learning in the classroom, then we need to give them more practical problems, ask more practical solutions, give some puzzles. We need to give them a situation where they have to choose a solution over other. And this way we can design the classroom instruction at the different levels. If we design the classroom instruction in different level, we can probably answer some of the questions with which we started this session. These questions were about levels of learning, about students interest, about distinguishing book, distinguishing books which are better than some others and methods related to asking questions. If we use this schema better with practice, we can perhaps answer some of these questions. We can answer the question like why instructors in spite of being knowledgeable at times are not able to design a learning and teaching experience which is more joyful, creative and effective. This schema tells us that knowing a subject is important, but it is equally important to know at what level we want our students to bring. This schema can help us to distinguish books which are better than some others. We can identify books which focus on a specific level of learning. If our objective is remembering and understanding, we can choose one type of book. But if our objective is evaluation and creation, we can use another type of book. And looking at the books from this angle can help us appropriate for our learning need. This schema can help us to answer why some instructors ask more questions than answers they give in the class. How higher order thinking is provoked by asking questions and that is what many time instructors do in the classroom because questioning provoke higher order learning among students. We can also answer the question why some classes are more interesting than others. Some of us are more interested at understanding a phenomena, but many of us are more interested to apply, evaluate or analyze the things. When classroom is designed according to these different levels and appropriate methods are chosen, a large number of students will be able to enjoy this learning process. So, we have seen that learning in the classroom is not the process of simple giving and receiving instructions. It is a complex process and Bloom's taxonomy can help us to bring some clarity to the complex process 
and it can help us to design the learning process in the classroom in a more systematic way, which eventually can result in more effective communication between learner and teacher within the classroom. Thank you very much.